and good morning to all of the children of Mount Mariah. This is Minister Christian, and I'm so excited that you have decided to join me in worship today as we worship the Lord together. If you are excited to be in the presence of God, can you just give yourself a round of applause for showing up and for being present and for being willing to learn more about the Word of God. So we start every session off with prayer and so I ask right now that you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today, God. We thank you for the children and the and the parents and the guardians, God, that are present. We ask, oh God, that you can allow us to have an amazing time in you. God, I pray that they enjoy the story that we have for them today, God, and whatever they stand in need of today, God, may you just continue to just be with them, be present with them, and allow them to feel your love and your spirit. We pray that you take over our time today and make it blessed and holy in your name. Amen. Awesome, guys. So, as you all know, I love, love, love to start our time off with our testimonies. If you have a testimony, I ask right now that you stop the video and that you share it to the person to the left or to the right of you. And I will begin. Um, actually, just last week, I had the privilege and honor of going on like a little mini vacation staycation in Virginia. I um, wasn't able to go out and do a whole lot of things because of COVID, but just to be able to get away from my normal location and my normal environment, it was just such a beautiful, beautiful time. So what are you grateful for? What has God done in your life since we last met? Um, waking you up, giving you breath in your body. Maybe you did something fun and exciting. Maybe you played with a new friend. Maybe you talked to a family member. Whatever it is, we have to show gratitude and thankfulness for what God is doing in our life. All right? So today will actually be a two-part series, and we are going to be having story time with Jonah. All right? Everybody say story time with Jonah. Story time with Jonah, yes. So today, what I'm gonna be doing is, I've been reading a lot of the stories in the Bible, and I've been asking God to show me which story to share with you all. And again, the book that I'm, I'm using is Bible Made Easy for Kids by David Strayler. Bible Made Easy for Kids by David Strayler. You don't have to be a kid to um, partake in this book. It's just really, really good knowledge, breaks it down. And so as I was uh, reading the, the story about Jonah, I said, ooh, this is a good one. And so um, it's two part series. I'm gonna read half today. I'm gonna ask some questions for you to think about. And then next week, I'm going to continue with part two. Next week is gonna be what part? Yes, part two, okay. so. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna read along, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna ask some questions, and just make it as interactive as we possibly can, okay? I just I just wanna say I miss y'all. <laughs> I miss you guys so much, and, and, and I just thank you for, you know, being able to move with the digital world. I know in our class, a lot of you all talked about having iPads and iPhones and computers. Well, this is a time for all of that to come into our worlds and for us to stay connected. So let's go to Jonah's story. All right, so it reads, Jonah was a prophet of the Lord. One day, the Lord said to Jonah, Go to the great city of Nineveh, where? Yes, Nineveh, and tell the people there that I'm going to judge them for their wickedness. What does wickedness mean? Okay, yes, wickedness means evil. Wickedness means doing bad, bad, bad things. So Jonah was called to go to the city of Nineveh and to tell the people that God was going to judge them. Why? What did they do? They were being wicked. They were being evil. Okay. But Jonah ran away from the Lord. <laughs> he went in the opposite direction towards the sea and found a ship leaving for Tarshish. Where? 
harshest, okay? He paid the fare and got on board, hoping to escape from the Lord. So, God has told Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah does not go to Nineveh. He goes the opposite direction to Tarshish. So my first question for you is, have you ever been told by an adult or maybe God has maybe told you to do something, a teacher, uh, an adult, and you're like, I don't want to do it and I'm going to do the opposite. I don't want to do it and I'm going to do it my way. I don't want to study and I'm not going to do it. So talk about that time. When was the time that, that you really did not obey? He, he was not obedient. He did not obey. So let's, let's, let us relate to Jonah. So as I think about my life, um, if I were to think about a time when I did not obey, I, I go back to third grade. And if you can believe it, Miss Christian used to talk all the time in class. My teacher would tell me to stop talking, and I'm still whispering things to my friends. I'll be taking a test, and I'm still whispering and talking to my friend. And I remember I used to get D's and F in conduct. I don't know what your school is like. Do y'all get conduct grades? Like how, how well you're talking in class? I used to always get a bad grade, and I remember one day my mom asked for my prior support, and I t did not tell the truth, and I told her that we didn't receive it. Well, long story short, my mom came up to the school, and she pulled me out of class, and y'all, I got in trouble. <laughs> so that's one time where I was told to do something. I was told to give my mom the prior support. I was told to be silent in class, and I did what I wanted to do, and but mom found out. So what's your story? If I'm going to be open and tell you my secrets, I want you to share your secrets with someone to the left or to the right of you. Don't worry about getting in trouble. Don't worry about, you know, not being able to go outside and play. This is something of the past and God requires us to repent, right? God requires us to ask for forgiveness. God, God wants us to do the right thing. So what happens after Jonah does things his way? Let's continue to read with our story time. But the Lord sent a powerful wind that made huge waves come up. So this is, remember, after he gets on the boat going in the opposite direction that God told him to go in, the Lord sent a powerful wind that made huge waves come up. The sailors were worried that the ship would break apart. So they shouted to their gods to help them. Lord, please help me. The waves are just too strong. I cannot handle it. Then they started throwing the cargo overboard to make the ships lighter. Meanwhile, Jonah lay fast asleep in the lower part of the ship. So what's happening right now, guys? You can pause the video and you can you can uh, discuss it or you can just walk walk through it with me right now. So Jonah gets on the boat. What happens after that? Yes, the winds and the waves become really, really bad. Then what happens after that? They uh, ask the Lord for help. Like, okay, God, I need, I need help right now. And then what happens after that? They take the things that are on the boat and they throw it overboard, right? So can you just imagine you have all these clothes or you have cars or you have um, all these items that, that, that you really needed and you're throwing it overboard, you know, just to see if, if, if the boat and the waves and everything will kind of just calm down because things are just going everywhere. So... While all of this hap is happening, where is Jonah, the one who disobeyed God? He is asleep, y'all. There is a storm going on, and Jonah is asleep, okay? What do you think happens later in this story? What do you think they do? Hmm? Okay, let, let's see if you're right. Let's see if you're right. So this is what happens. Um, so the captain went down and said to him, how can you sleep at a time like this? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will save us. So the captain goes down to where Jonah was sleeping and says, hey, 
I need you to pray. I know that you are a man of God. I know that you, you know, beloved, and you love Jesus. I need you to pray because maybe if you pray, this storm will stop. And so the question that I have is, what are the consequences for our action? Okay, what does that mean? When you do things, things happen and things follow, right? So for me, when I was not being truthful with my progress report and I was still talking in class, the consequence or the action was that I was put on punishment. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I was kicked off the cheerleading squad. What in the world? Yes, but there was consequences. So for Jonah, when God told him to go to Nineveh and he went in the opposite direction, the consequence was while he was on this boat, the Lord allowed the waves and everything to just go wow, go crazy. And so God was trying to get his attention. And you know, the captain asked him to pray because he says, look, you are connected to God. Everyone is doing their part. I need you to do your part and pray. So what are the consequences of your actions? And if you can't think of an action, just know, you know, as you're going to a new grade and as you're going um, maybe into uh, a new school system or as you're getting older, just know that every action, Everything you do has an action to follow. So sometimes when you're doing things and you're like, no one will ever see me or no one's watching, God is always watching. And there's always a consequence for your action. So yes, it may be tempting to do things your way, but you always have to say, Lord, help me do things the way that you want me to do it. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's continue to read with our story time. All right, so what happens next? Let's see. Then the sailors cast lots to find out which of them was responsible for the storm. Who do you think is responsible for the storm? Hmm. Okay. The lots pointed to Jonah, so they started asking him all sorts of questions. Jonah told them that he had served the living God, the creator of land and sea, and that he was running away from him. So the people on the boat are like, okay, who is responsible for this? And after they went through their process, they realized that, you know, Jonah was responsible for this. And they started asking him all this, these questions. And he pretty much said that he was running away from God. <laughs> Have you ever ran away from God? Oh my goodness. Have you ever ran away from God? Have you ever ran away from something that you were supposed to do? Right? I, I know that it can be a bit much sometimes or sometimes what we feel that we have to do like we don't want to do it or we can't even we don't even think we can do it but the thing is we still are supposed to be in communication with God so I just want to just say when things get tough in your life when you don't want to do something when you don't think you can do something when you don't think you're strong enough to do something talk to God never run away don't run away run to God don't run from God okay so this is what happens then uh, when he said that he was running away from God, this is what the sailors did. This made the sailors really worried and they asked, so what should we do? Throw me into the sea and the waters will be calm. I know this storm is all my fault, Jonah said. The sailors were afraid of what would happen if they threw God's servant into the sea but when the storm got worse, they picked him up and threw him over the side. The storm stopped at once and the sea became calm. So, you know, Jonah, he, he had ownership and he said, okay, yes, it's my fault. Yes, just throw me over, just throw me over into the water. 
And the sailors were like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not going to do that. We, we care about you. You know, we don't know what God is going to do to us. And then when it got really, 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 really bad, they just said, you know what? You got to go. And they threw him over into the water. We're actually going to stop our story there. And we're going to pick up next week. And we're going to talk about what happened after he was thrown into the water. But the thing that I want us to talk about very, very briefly is that your decisions affect other people. For instance, when you are on the playground or someone that you know is on the playground and they push someone or they talk about someone or if you're in church or if you're in class and you're mean to someone it has um it, it affects that person it makes them sad it makes them lonely it makes them cry so jonah saying no to God affected the men. They were afraid, they were fearful, they were in a storm, they didn't know what to do, they were confused. So just know that when you say no to God, when you say no to doing the right thing, it will affect your siblings, it will affect your parents, it will affect your church, it will affect so many people. So I'm not saying this to make you afraid and to scare you or anything like that, but just know that people are you you have the you have the power to 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 um to touch the lives around you. For instance, your actions affect people. For instance, when you clean up your room and your room is spotless how does it affect your parent how does it affect your guardian they're excited they're happy for you you know you are feeling excited if you share your room with the sibling they're like whoa this room is so clean they are affected in a good way so just because you know jonah made the wrong decision and his effect and he affected people in a bad way i want you to also know that you can make the right decision and you can also affect people in a good way amen so i just want to pause there as we talk about decisions as we're talking about saying yes to God, I want to pause there and I want to ask, what are you praying for? Is there a decision that you're praying for? Is there a person? Is there something that God is telling you to do and you are afraid? Um, is Has COVID allowed you to not spend that much time with God and not pray and you want to go back in the right direction? Whatever it is, we can give it to God today. And I ask that you join me in prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for your power and your authority and your love, God. We thank you, God, for your direction. Holy Spirit, we ask, God, that you just continue to guide us, guide our hearts, guide our tongues, guide our minds, and allow us to say yes to you. God, I ask that you bless our friends and our families and our communities, God, and people all throughout the world, those who stand in need, those in the hospitals, those who are sick, God. Lord God, we just love and adore you, God, and we just say thank you for all you have done in our lives. And the children of God will say amen. Amen. Praise you, God. Well, thank you. Uh, so much again for joining us for Children's Church. We have a story to finish next week. So I ask that you tune in next week so we can continue this story about Jonah and see exactly what happened. All right. So I love you guys. I hope and pray you have an amazing week coming up and I will talk to you soon. Bye bye.